here we are, everybody. Welcome back to another Open Music Sessions. Give yourselves a round of applause for joining us. Yes. Oh, the crowd is alive. The summer spirit. The heat that we shouldn't have. Fantastic. Thank you for joining us. Another first Friday block party here at Denver Open Media. You can hear a lot of terms. Open Music Sessions, Open Media Foundation. All these things just mean a cool place with a bunch of fancy stuff, and you get to press all the buttons if you come here. That's pretty much it. This is uh, our chance to show off what we do here, which is a, a studio, production studio, uh, a school, a hangout. They make robots in this other room there with a bunch of hackers. Feedback that we're currently working on right now. This is all in the process here. Things we do at Denver Open Media. And uh, I'll be guiding you on this journey tonight. My name is Daniel Reskin. I am a member here and a local stand-up comic. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Uh, no, I, I mean, this is called warming up the crowd. It's one of the many techniques you learn here at Denver Open Media. I produce my own show here. Uh, come check it out every third Wednesday of the month. It's called Datmocracy, though. It's a political comedy show. We talk about Denver's issues. We talk about national issues. We have a panel. It's kind of like Bill Maher, except I'm not a smarmy asshole. So it's kind of, and our jokes are current as far as racial stereotypes. You know, we can, we're good. Um, other than that, thanks so much. I'd like to do a little housekeeping up top and just say, hey, to everybody joining us, one of the many ways that you can experience this program. We've got, of course, the visual people watching now Comcast, channel 57, and 881 HD, not too close. Zoom out, camera. I'm trying to moisturize. I'm trying to. Uh, I look really good to our radio listeners. What's up, 104.7? How's it doing to KOMF, everybody? Yeah. Don't steer off the road, everybody. I know it's exciting. You should be here right now. We have a full sushi buffet. You missed it, radio listeners. There's an acrobat right behind me. Uh, fire, fire jugglers. It's... Really should, should invest in the television, radio listeners. Okay. Um, and online people. Hey, how's it going? DenverOpenMedia.org. So happy to have you with us tonight. Buffering. Uh, uh, net neutrality? Or was it me? I don't know. Figure it out. Write your congressperson. We should do an episode on that. All right. Oh, yeah, there it is. Facebook, follow us on social media. All the things, you know the things, go to them, follow us. Uh, I'd like to thank our sponsors, of course. So many beautiful sponsors. Sexy Pizza, are you full of it? You currently have ingested it. The pizza, that is. Uh, I'd like to thank The Westward. Their fantastic coverage. Uh, sex Pot Comedy, fueling the comedy here and much of the comedy. Crazy Mountain Brewing Company, fueling your applause and excitement, hopefully. Uh, the Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project. Comedy Works. Yes, we're grappling off tickets to them later. Make sure you join this raffle. Uh, also, KGNU, another radio station, 88.5, also operates here from Denver Open Media. So, so much to check out, be excited about. And let me just tell you quickly about our show before we kick things off. Everybody, our musician tonight, Really excited to have him here, fresh off a brand new album. Everybody give it up for Kid Astronaut. <laughs> and the other side, you got the music and the comedy. The comedy side tonight, two incredible heavy hitters of the Denver comedy scene. Give it up for Nalawi Mengist and Aaron Maslow. <laughs> Very excited to have them here tonight. They're funny. You will laugh at them. Just a, I'm a psychic. All right. So uh, before we get to the fun stuff, just kidding. This next part, this is the, the nutrition of the show. This is the important part, the community, the hearth, the heart, before we just get to all the, the gyrating and the giggles and all the things like that. Uh, to, to do our community spotlight tonight, I can't have all the fun. One of the many people that keep this wonderful machine running. Uh, everybody give it up for Jamie. Multiple mics. Voila. 
Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. <laughs> I'm a little bit short for that stand, so I'm going to stand by it. <laughs> uh, today, we are featuring a couple of nonprofits in our nonprofit spotlight, one of which is the Intendance Film Festival, which we are hosting here on June 8th and 9th. That's next weekend. I have a video that we are going to show for you um, right now, I believe. If not, I just continue to smile up here. Um, I'll also be interviewing. Um You ready? Ready. Let you have it anymore. The anesthetist's already on her way. Believe me, you don't want to upset the anesthetist. so long to return to me. here at Denver Open Media, and you were just watching a couple of clips from the last nine years of the Intendance Film Festival. Um, those were some fan favorites, and I'm here joined by Casey Elliott. She is a co-director of the Intendance Film Festival and 
the vice president of the Intendance Film Festival nonprofit. Hi, Casey. Hi. <laughs> so um, we have the festival here next Saturday and Sunday. Friday, Friday and Saturday. Yep. Okay, on Friday June 8th and 9th, it'll be here at Denver Open Media, 700 Calumath Street in Denver. Um, can you tell us a bit about Intendance? Yeah, so Intendance Film Festival is a community-driven indie film fest. We show local films, um, we show student films, we show films from all over the world. Uh, we're kind of all-encompassing in our genres, so um, from some of the clips you saw, I mean, we have animation, we have sci-fi, horror, um, comedy. Uh, we were the first film festival to have music videos as a category, um, so we also have music cool. videos in there. Um, just a little bit of everything. Uh, Crazy Mountain Brewery is going to also be there for us. They are I one know. of our um, sponsors. And, of course, Denver Open Media is a fantastic sponsor, and they have been for the last few years. Oh, oh gee, thanks. <laughs> 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 well, we're really excited to host you guys here. Um, have you had a chance to preview a few of the films, or um, what does the process look like for getting into this festival? Um, so because there are so many categories and just so many different ways that people can submit their films, we do see a lot of films. Um, this year we're going to have 41 films in total, um, and that doesn't include a special fundraiser we're doing on opening night. So um, opening night we're doing a Sheridan family benefit. Uh, Patrick Sheridan was a just big... Uh, icon and lovable person in our local film community and uh, he put so much into community film um, and uh, teaching acting to kids and just everything. I mean if you knew him he was an amazing person. He, he passed you know not that long ago. Um, so we're doing a fundraiser for his uh, family and uh, the money uh, tickets are ten dollars um, at the table when you come in here at Denver Open Media and all that money goes to his family um, during that. Yeah. So we have 41 films, plus the benefit films, which should be the uh, couple of films, like 10 films, an hour's worth of films. Oh, wow. So the benefit will precede the Intendance Film Festival, or will it wrap it up? It'll kind of precede it. It'll be almost running at the same time. Uh, because we have so many films and so little time, so to speak, we are doing two separate screenings. So people, there will be people that will be there for the benefit. And okay. then we'll also have, because we'll have two studios going, we'll have regular festival films showing in another um, studio for people that aren't going to be there for the benefit. Okay, well, that sounds like a really, really great um, opportunity to help, you know, support local, local art, especially, and a family that has been involved in the arts for so long. Yeah, it definitely, it definitely means a lot to us, and, and that's why we're doing it. And um, we will also have some live music on Friday night um, okay. by Elizabeth Rose and uh, some karaoke on Saturday if you guys are <laughs> feeling <Karaoke>. it. <laughs> uh, Crazy Mountain will be sponsoring the karaoke. <laughs> are you going to sing? <laughs> I am. I do. I, I try to get it started every year. And, uh, oh, that's awesome. That's you great. Know, <laughs> but because no one else wants to be the first one up there. So I just yeah, kind of do Yeah, yeah, yeah. He who throws the first stone. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> Sings the next song. That's the, Sings the next that sentence song. goes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, um, what are you most excited for uh, for attendance? Um, you know, is it the crowds? Is it a certain film that you've had, at, like, you know, just in the back of your brain that you got to preview? Because um, a lot of these will be debuting, right, at the festival? Yeah, yeah. This will be the first time a lot of the films show. Um, God, what am I most excited about? That's I've never been asked that before. That's a new one. Cool. Um, <laughs> I am just excited to be there with the indie creatives and the people that love indie film as much as we do. So there are people that are there showing a film for the first time that have never made a film that are like, I made it into a film festival. And it's great work, and they've just never shown it anywhere before. And so we're kind of that outlet for them. And students that are like, this was my favorite project, and I want to show this to the world. So I like being there and being with the people that are excited about their art and want to show their art to the rest of the world. That sounds really good. Um, well, is there anything else you'd like to say about Intendance before we kind of wrap up the interview? Join us next weekend. It's uh, two-hour block tickets are 12 bucks. That's two hours of indie films, and we have beer and food and a great time and karaoke, and I'll sing first. Don't forget. <laughs> so.
<laughs> I'll be there for that. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Casey. Yeah. And uh, you're welcome to take a seat and watch the awesome show. Thanks. Check out Intendance next weekend. Um, our next nonprofit spotlight will be joined by Westward. Will Wyatt to Sobel will be joining us, and we're going to throw to a quick video for the Westward Music Showcase right now. Welcome back, everybody, to Open Music Sessions. You were just watching a video promoting Westward Music Showcase. I am joined today by Will <sighs> Wataez. Wataez Sobel. What? What? How do you say that? You did really good. Oh that man. was spot on. I've been practicing my whole life. <laughs> yes, Will is um, representing Westward today. Thank you for joining us on this beautiful stage. Thank you for having me. <laughs> um, could you tell us a little bit about showcase this summer yeah absolutely so the westward music showcase one of the longest running music festivals in denver the largest music festival one day music festival in denver we have a gaggle of <laughs> national headliners um and then over 75 of denver's best local bands yeah they are the best we are westward so local is the most important to us as our it's with us, too. Yeah, I think yeah. our views really align there. We have, <laughs> we actually have a session tomorrow here. Yeah, we do. In Woo. the other studio with The Hollow, mm -hmm. which is a band that's playing Westward Music Showcase, as well as the Levitt Pavilion. Mm -hmm. And they're going to be doing a set here in front of a green screen. Yeah, it's, it's in a room entirely encased in fluorescent green paint. Um, it's... You what know, happens there? <laughs> uh, blindingly green, uh, you know, shows, really. <laughs> if you're looking on TV and not looking live at the room, you'll see amazing graphics keyed in through the green screen because legend has it that green is a really good way to, you know, um, put a background, like a fake background behind people. Yeah. Is that a legend? <laughs> it's urban legend. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so I'll Westward actually up. partners with us, Open Media Foundation and Denver Open Media and Levitt to produce this cool new show called Open Music Sessions, live from the Blue Room. Wax on, wax off, live from the Blue Room. Um, and tomorrow the Hollow will be playing, uh, preceding their Westward Music Showcase performance. So we'll be, we'll be here at noon 
be sure to tune in on the same outlets that you are tuning in on today. So, well, uh, you'll be there tomorrow, yes? I will be there. Okay, cool, yes. me too. Um, can you tell us anything at all about, well, what are you most excited about for Westward Music Showcase? It's a great question. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I don't have anything prepared, <laughs> um, except for feedback. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't get to enjoy the festival like all of you fine people. Um, I'm going to be running around. I actually get to coordinate all of our volunteers. Like, that's my day of responsibility, and it is my favorite thing to do. It's like <laughs> 300 volunteers running around with oh me God. running around chasing them with, like, swords and shields and lassos. Um, yeah. No. Oh, no, no, like It's uh, just lasso. more intimidation, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, <laughs> that's, I mean, personally for me, like, I'm being selfish. I also, I've been to the festival just as an attendee. It's an amazing event. You get to go to True. seven different venues. This year we have 10 stages. We're at Vinyl, The Church, La Rumba, 100% de Agave. Amongst, hashtag uh, vibe. Hashtag what vibe. What is that? It replaced Broadway's, right? It did. Yeah, I don't know what the name's about, but it sounds really cool. Yeah, I and if you're go. looking for any type of vibe, they have it apparently <laughs> on Twitter. Um, <laughs> yeah, so and Instagram yeah. too. You can find it there probably. I don't know how hashtags work. It's not my job. It's all right. You're the volunteer coordinator. Thank you. We're really happy to have you here today. Mm. Um, what bands are you excited to see at Showcase? I mean, if you have any time to see bands, because I need to know where to go. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a great point. Um, as far as local bands go, I'm super excited to see Kayla Marquis. <laughs> She's <laughs> wonderful. I had to censor myself. Um, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we are um, live. <laughs> I'm excited to see The Hollow. I've never actually seen them perform before. I guess I'll see them tomorrow, which will be wonderful to get things started. Yeah. I'm excited for some of the headliners as well. Me too. Yeah. What are our headliners for Westward? Because they're pretty big, right? Yeah, they're they're big, they're <laughs> bold, and they're beautiful. <laughs> Don't tell them. Three um, <laughs> we have Galantis, electronic <laughs> folks, Bonobo, a little Bonobo. bit of electronic-y. Uh, we have St. Lucia, okay. if you ever heard of them, kind of like Poptronic. I'm making up genres as we go. Okay. If I keep going, it'll get worse. <laughs> Usually use like um, like a, a, a prefix type word and then like some long five syllable word and then end it with like, you know, just like the, the rule of threes really. Anyway, we're going to have to wrap up this uh, quick conversation. I'm running out of questions anyway. <laughs> Is there anything else you'd like to pl uh, say? <laughs> well, we would love to see you all at the Westward Music Showcase. You can go to westwardshowcase.com. And thanks so much for Denver Open Media for having us and also for being our partner, promoting open music sessions. We are so proud and honored to be associated with y'all. Yeah, it was and great. And hope that it grows more into the future. Oh, it's going to get big. It's going to get big. Keep an eye out. We're going to be huge. We're going to be huge. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Will. Good to see you, as Good always. You. And now I think I'm going to let you go. Fly on away. Fly away, pretty bird. Thank you. Coming up, Daniel, your regular host. I'm done. Thank you. Oh, great job, Jamie. Put it there, Captain. Thank you. I'm going to get off the stage if I'm allowed. Is the intern allowed to get off stage? <laughs> Yeah, I think they have some coffee for you to make, so I All think right. it's... Uh, no. Let me get to that. You did amazing. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, you. Jamie. Thank you. I'll take that All for right. you. Oh, yeah. Can you take Fantastic. I sh probably shouldn't have taken that for you. Here, Jamie, actually, do you mind putting it in that stand over there and, and securing the stand ready for our next comedian guests that are going to be... This is the process. So, you got it. There we go. Showbiz, folks. All right. So, we're going to check out Westward Show's... We're going to check out attendance. Yeah. All right, tepid response. I, I know you're really, you've already pre-ordered tickets online. So you've learned, you've listened, you've been great listeners, but that needs to stop, okay? I, I still need you to listen, but this is the part of the show where your voice, your vocal, your reactions matter. Us comedians, we feed off of your laughter, off of your energy. We reflect that. All right, I know there's a lot of cameras flying around. Don't worry, they're not looking at you. We're trying to get it 
the magic of showbiz. These comics have a good video to send to a festival and finally not make money at a festival, okay? This is, this is a big ladder to climb. Uh, oh, look, there I am. Good for my video. Host. <laughs> That's my, my GIF for GIF. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say it. But uh, let me use that later. So can you, can you give me some energy right now? Can we get a little energy going? Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm not even going to do the cheesy second ask. That was good. I'm good. That was fantastic. Uh, very excited to introduce our first of two comedians tonight. Uh, he has a podcast called Schooling Noah on the Sex Pot Comedy Network. My beloved network. Pretty much the movers and shakers of comedy in Denver. Everybody. Very excited to have this gentleman here. Give it up for Aaron Maslow. Do I want this one? What do I want? I want that one. I want this. Yeah. Don't start the clock. It's not on. Now it's on. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Good to see you. Let's start over. Hey, hi. <laughs> uh, do you ever get on an airplane and you hear a screaming baby? So you turn around to see what all the commotion is, and it's just me and 32B doing this. Oh! I want your seat. That's what's going on. I want to get in there. I want to sit where you're sitting. I want to touch your stuff. I want to get in there. This is my impression of a desperate cheerleader. You ready for this? Give me a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody ever does. Um, <laughs> probably why I didn't make that high school squad, the high school cheer squad. Boy, we're having fun, aren't we? I'm a big, uh, big drinker. That's what I do. One time, though, I was drinking, <laughs> drinking and driving, which is a big problem. Shouldn't do that. Uh, I did get pulled over. The police officer came up to my car, said, "Do you know why I pulled you over?" And I said, "No." <laughs> said, "Your headlight is out." I said, uh, "Badiddle." <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Put your shirt back on." That's what he said. And uh, he took my license and registration and went back to his police car to run my information. While he was away, he started taking coins out of my penny dish and shoving them in my mouth. I don't know if you've heard this. Coins in your mouth are supposed to mess up the breathalyzer test I was about to take. <laughs> if you haven't heard, don't worry. It doesn't work, actually. <laughs> Cop comes back to my car. He says, Mr. Maslow, uh, get your headlight fixed. You're free to go. And I turned to him and I said, <laughs> because $40 worth of pennies came out of my mouth. <laughs> and I said, thank you. And then I drove into a tree. Because okay? <laughs> my headlight was out, you see? <laughs> That's my favorite. <laughs> I uh, have a dog at my house. And uh, when I was out one day, the dog went to the bathroom on the floor. That's a problem. Because I also have a Roomba. <laughs> if you don't know, a Roomba is a robotic vacuum that smears dog poop all over your carpet. <laughs> and I got home and I saw this mess and I was so mad, but I didn't know who to be more mad at, you know? I like grabbed the robot vacuum and like, what did you do? <laughs> and the dog was like, yeah, what did he do? <laughs> what I did was I took the Roomba out in my backyard and I shot it because... <laughs> Yeah, I bought the extended warranty and I was gonna use it. And uh, I take the Roomba back to Target and I said, give me a new vacuum. And they said, what's wrong with this one? I said, well, it's covered in poop and it's got a bullet in it. <laughs> okay. And that's when they asked me to leave. Like they do. I called my mom recently. I said, mom, do you love me? She said, short answer is no. Uh, Long answer, nobody loves you, okay? Stop calling, here. <laughs> Gonna need some mother's love, I don't know. I've got, uh, I'm married, I have children. I've got three wives, so, yeah, thank you, thank you. I'm just, I'm just kidding. Uh, I've actually, I married my high school sweetheart. She's my best friend, we've been together for uh, 
for 11 years. She's my best friend now, but it hasn't always been that way. Like, she wasn't the best man at my wedding or anything. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. I knew I was going to marry my wife when I met her because I just knew I got her pregnant. You know how that works, right? <laughs> She's a sweet lady, but she does not like that joke. <laughs> uh, let's see, we got three kids. And uh, the older one, he's older than the other two. He's a handful. Uh, he started kindergarten this last year, and he missed the cutoff the year before, so he's kind of the older kid in his class. And I knew he was older because the littler kids were on one side of the room eating glue, and my son was on the other side of the room huffing glue, and just like, <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, he saw a lot of colors this year, so we're real proud of him. <laughs> really getting into it. They have car line at our school. Uh, basically. It means I drive around the back of the school, I give them a number, and they send my kid out. It's like a drive through for children. I'm like, I'll get that number five-year-old and a bag and uh, fries. Send out the math teacher, get in the van. Let's do this. It's a party. If you guys don't do car line, that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. My son was uh, learning how to go to the bathroom. He was potty training when he was three, when he was younger. And that was uh, a tough time because he just kept peeing on the toilet because he's a jerk. <laughs> so what I do is I took him outside and show him, showed him how to go to the bathroom on a tree. I thought that would be fun. <laughs> what an experience for dad and son. You know, He runs outside one day because I know he's getting the hang of it. I see him run up to this big tree and he's standing there. He puts his hand up and then with his other hand wiggles his pants down. And as he's standing there getting ready to do his business, he poops out his <laughs> butt. <laughs> And I'm watching this thing from the kitchen window. I'm like, what is going on? It looked like the ash end of a cigar. It just kept getting bigger and bigger. I'm like, where's gravity? It did a half pipe trick. It's going so long. Finally, snaps off like a Slim Jim. Hits his underwear and flies into the yard. Lands out by where the dogs eat. And I had to go get a shovel, you know, and hit him with it. Because I'm like, what the hell, man? We don't have fences. Our neighbors can see you getting hit with a shovel. And that's a problem. I have a problem with kids. Kids are rough, man. Uh, I don't like ugly kids. I think ugly kids are a lot like farts. Because the best thing to do is just leave them in the parking lot before you get in the car. That's, <laughs> that's good policy is what that is. I saw this kid at the airport. Just drive me nuts. He was screaming, nernies, mommy, nernies. He wanted to be breastfed in Terminal C. I'm like, dude, if you're old enough to say nernies, mommy, nernies, <laughs> and you, you're 17, <laughs> you're too old to be breastfed. I knew he was 17 because he had like a weird, wispy mustache, but uh, his mom was into it, and so was I. I missed my flight. Uh, <laughs> can't do that anymore. Let's see. Uh, I've also got twin toddlers, two twin boys. I think having twin boys makes my wife the opposite of Thunderdome because one man entered, two men leave. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> People ask me, uh, do twins run in my family? Yeah, my twins are twins. And uh, furthermore, <laughs> people, people also ask, hey, which twin is the evil twin? I'm like, man, they're both evil, all right? <laughs> one is a full-out biter. He'll get you. Take you like a hand fruit, he will. He'll just go to Sometimes you'll catch him like you're holding on to him and he's like licking your neck and you think he's kind of kissing you like being silly, but really he's just tenderizing the meat because he's going <laughs> to burn. <laughs> the other one, he's a little more subtle, you know? He, uh, he wasn't wearing a diaper recently because he had diaper rash, so he was airing things out. <laughs> just running around the house. My wife is getting the kids ready for bed. And uh, this little rascal went ahead and pooped on the floor. Yeah, it's a poop heavy set, sorry. <laughs> My wife's getting the kids ready for bed. She sees the mess, and she's about to clean it up. She turns and gets the other kid out of the bedroom, the other twin. While her back is turned, the poopy baby bends down, picks up the poop, and puts it in his mouth. <laughs> and my wife screams bloody murder. She's like, get out of here! And I come running over, I'm like, what's going on? She's like, how do you get poop out of a kid's mouth? I'm like, I'll get paper towels, babe. 
She's like, I need answers, not an idiot, okay? Look, I was just trying to help her, and I'm, I'm trying to give her advice, and she's not listening, and I don't think she loves me. What I should have done is gotten one of those nose sucker things, you know, those little blue bulbs. I would have filled that with water and then chucked the baby down the stairs. Because we already have two. We don't need that many. There's already enough. Plenty, plenty of babies to go around in our house. What I learned that day is that some kids are accidents. But all kids are mistakes. That's what I learned. I took my kids to the zoo one time. And uh, it was hot out, it was sticky. And I kind of got clammy in my man part area. So I took the kids to the bathroom with me so I could freshen up. My oldest says, Dad, what are you doing? I said, well, when a man's walking around the hot zoo, December, seriously? Sometimes you got to wipe. He says, yeah, why do you got to do it at the urinal? A lot of sass out of this kid. I can't even handle it. I like the zoo because they have beer at the zoo. And uh, it's fun, fun experience because now the kids get to see what it's like to pull dad around in the wagon. You know what I mean? I'm all drunk. I want to see the giraffes too. You know, they're just pulling me around. Guys, I wish I had a big banger closer, but that was it. You guys have been delightful. Thank you so much. Danny Ruskin, I appreciate it. Oh, don't put that mic away yet, Aaron. Oh, Talk to me, Dad. Okay, we'll do. Let's do it. Uh, actually, we don't have time for that. Thanks, everybody. Um, <laughs> it's pre-dented, actually, so don't worry. You're used to it. You make uh, a good man. Tell you us about your good. podcast real quick. Tell us what's going on with you, uh, this comedy stuff. Sure. So Schooling uh, Noah. Sure. Schooling Noah with Aaron Maslow and a special guest is a podcast on the Sex Pot Comedy Network. And um, what I do is uh, I'm an old man. I have a lot of experience. Noah is a young boy. He's only 20, one or 20. So what we do is we invite people on the show to educate us about the world. I'm out of touch and he doesn't know nothing. So we get to learn from nice. uh, people who do know things. And it's Two really- Two kinds of ignorant. Yeah, it's the ignorant on the opposite side. You really want to hit that sweet spot right in the, I just graduated college, I know everything. And I just had a family, nothing matters. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice. And so that's available on sexpotcomedy sexpotcomedy.com. Nice, and people can follow you. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram. At, uh, it's my name backwards, Woolsam Nora. So spell that, you Whoa, weirdos. good luck with that. Yeah. There, there's just something for you on the, on the lower thirds there. See, see it? That's your website. Oh, God, I have a website? I have a website, you guys, and uh, you should check that out. That's my name, forwards.com. Forwards or backwards, he's great either way. Everyone give it up yes, for Aaron so Maslow. Much. Thank you. All right. You ready to keep that up for one more comedian? Yeah. Except for you two. Can't handle it. I know you two are comedied out. Sorry. Go nurse your comedy muscle. It seems to be pulled. Uh, however, for the rest of you, Tub Comedy Warriors, you are to be rewarded. Uh, this next comedian is so talented. We're very happy to have him here. Everybody give it up for Nalawi Mengist. I'm from Ethiopia, and uh, yeah. I like being Ethiopian. Hey, hey, are you Ethiopian too? No, nah, my girlfriend. Your girlfriend my, is. My son is. Half Your son is. Yeah. Oh, okay, hell yeah. No, Ethiopian women are dope. I can't make any fucking thing about that. But yeah, I'm Ethiopian. Uh, and I like being Ethiopian, but like one thing I hate about being Ethiopian is like uh, uh, all the rampant homophobia in the community, right? Like uh, I remember when I was eight years old, uh, I asked my dad, "Was it mean to be gay?" And he said, I knew it, and then just left the room immediately. <laughs> so I went to see you Boulder, and uh, there were a lot of things I liked about college, but like one thing I didn't like was like hanging out with these like out-of-state rich kids who had no clue how much money they had, right? And uh, they didn't know how to not be like rude about it, right? Like, I remember one time, uh, it was uh, the day after spring break, my senior year of college, right? And I walk into one of my classes, there's these two kids that were debating whether Cancun or Cabo is better to snow cocaine in, right? And, uh, and uh, <laughs> this girl I was talking to at the time, she was like telling me about like going to going to Vancouver and going to Seattle and doing all these cool things over there. Then she was like, hey, Malawi, what'd you do during spring break? And I was like, I did mushrooms in my backyard. <laughs> 
that trip cost me $17. Like, <laughs> another thing I hated was like all the cases of cultural appropriation I'd always see, right? I remember when I was at this house party, right? And I see this white dude walk in, and he has cornrows, and he's wearing a dashiki. Yeah, I didn't like that at all, because, like, this guy, he's not black, he's not African, like, he just doesn't get to wear my heritage like that. Like, that made me so angry, I set my craft beer down on the table next to him. <laughs> uh, tied up my vans, and, uh, <laughs> as soon as I got up, I was like, is it really worth stretching out my skinny jeans just to talk to this dude? <laughs> nah. I'll just go home, listen to some Wu-Tang, you know? You know, I don't, I don't blame him though. He's just trying to be woke, right? Like, like I have a lot, like, a lot of like woke white friends, like those white friends that constantly try to prove to you that they're not racist. And you're like, hey man, I'm hanging out with you. Didn't assume so, right? <laughs> like one time I was at my friend, like two weeks ago, I was at my friend's house, I went for the first time. And uh, as soon as I walk in, he just conveniently has the 2015 BET Hip Hop Awards playing on his TV, right? <laughs> and like immediately he's like trying to explain it, like trying to justify it, right? He's like, yeah man. I just feel the Kendrick Lamar standing on top of that cop car with like this really powerful symbols for police brutality in America, you know? I was getting like mad uncomfortable, like crazy uncomfortable. So I was like, hey man, you got anything else we can watch? And then he was like, hey yo, check it, my TV yours lit, fam, right? And he started showing me all these TV shows he's had recorded over the years. But the weird part, it was just like TV shows with just black people in it, right? It was like uh, The Fresh Prince, uh, Empire, uh, Moesha, uh, the news. <laughs> I was like, hey man, you got anything like Game of Thrones? And he was like, I got the wire. I was like, oh hell yeah, let's watch that. Yeah. One season two. Oh. But it's better than the opposite, right? Like I, have, like, I have a cousin, he goes to the University of Virginia, and I don't know if you guys remember last August, but some terrible things went down there, right? And uh, when I first heard the news, I was freaking out. Uh, because, like, you know, he was a freshman in the dorms at the time, so, and I kind of, like, act, and he's, like, an only child, so I kind of act like his older brother, in a way, right? So, uh, next day, after I saw the news, I, uh, call him up, like, at, like, 6 a.m., because I was, like, freaking out, and I was, like, hey, man, you good? And then he said, uh, he said, uh, what happened? <laughs> and then I said, there are a bunch of neo-Nazis on your college campus carrying tiki torches and screaming really able things about, like, women, gays, Jews, minorities, and then he said, uh, he said, uh, oh, word. <laughs> I was like, yeah, man, I'm dead serious. Once again, are you good? He's like, I don't know, man, I was asleep. And then hung up the phone. <laughs> this kid slept through a goddamn race riot. Like, do you know how bad I want to be in one of those? Like, that's like a white woman sleeping through a, a farmer's market or something. Like, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't white crime is my pumpkin spice latte, you know? Like, it's seasonal. I don't get to see it that often. Uh, I'm a big hip-hop head. I like rap music a lot. Uh, favorite rapper is Lil Wayne. Uh, not because he's good, just because he says dumb things all the time, right? And I really enjoy that. Like, he has one song where he's like, I piss great and it's like old as yellow, right? And like, when I first heard that lyric, I was like, nah, Weezy, you're just dehydrated, man. Like, <laughs> like put some water in that styrofoam cup. You'll be fine. Well, this other song uh, by P.D. Pablo is called Freak Leak, right? And uh, my favorite part about it is like the hook, because like in the hook, he just like lists every single girl he's ever slept with, right? He's all these cool names, like Shaniqua, Chandra, Tamisha, all that. Yeah. I was like, man, if I do the same thing, like make a song, and in the hook, list every single girl I've ever asked, I've ever slept with, right? It would be like, it'd be like, Emma. <laughs> yeah. I go platinum in a week. That'd be so dope. I don't know. I listen to a lot of mumble rap. Like, that's what I like. I like the new stuff. I, my friends, they always make fun of me for it, but I don't care. The only thing I don't like about these new rappers is, like, the names of these dudes, right? Because, like, back in the day, you used to have, like, Scarface, like, you know, like, Tupac, Dr. Dre. Like, you would, like, buy their albums, start listening to it, and you'd be like, oh, my God, I'm going to be dead by track 12. Like, that scary gangster <laughs> stuff, right? Like, <laughs> like, now you have people like Lil Yachty, which took me, like, three weeks to realize he was talking about a boat. Which is cool, but like, what is a yacht besides a boat? It's a status symbol of wealth. But it is also a depreciating asset. <laughs> so what he's really saying with his name is like, yeah, I have a little bit of money, but uh, I'm gonna be worth nothing in three to five years. Like, 
Like, I feel like if he wanted to, like, you know, show how much money he had with his name, he called himself, like, I don't know, like, I don't know, like, Little Bitcoin, or, like, Young Stock Exchange, or <laughs> <laughs> Big Gentrification. Like, let's attack that generational. Well, oh. I think my favorite, my least favorite rap name lately is uh, NBA Youngboy. Because uh, uh, that's not the whole thing. The whole thing is that NBA Youngboy never be broke again, right? Which is kind of cool, because that's, like... <laughs> it's, like, it's like his favorite sport, a nickname, and then a manifesto afterwards. <laughs> like, that's like me as a comedian being like, NFL comedy boy, never do open mics again. Like that would be ridiculous. Cool, cool. Uh, if you couldn't tell by looking at me, my dad voted for Obama twice. Uh, and the first time he did, it was uh, the first time he got elected and he was, I was about to go to high school. And he was like telling me, he's like, I only voted for him so that you would know you know, you're black in America, even though we're like a family of immigrants, like you can truly do anything in this world, right? Like it was supposed to be like this inspirational thing for me. But uh, I don't know about you guys, I've never been like particularly inspired by Obama. Uh, he was like, this is a guy who went to both Columbia and Harvard, made out of the south side of Chicago, did like over 10 years of public service. Like he's a way better person than I will ever be. Like he deserved that job. <laughs> That's why I kind of like Trump a little bit. Because that guy did not deserve that job. <laughs> like, let's look at his resume. No political experience, seduces women like a Street Fighter character. He's about to start World War III with North Korea on Twitter and is still president of the United States of America. Like, I look at that guy, I'm like, oh, wow, I can really do anything. Wow. All right, I'm done. Keep it going for Nalawi. Right, well, you've earned their attention, you've earned their favor. Oh, cool. What would you like to, to tell them about? What you got going on? Where they, can they follow you, stalk you? Uh, follow me on Twitter. Twitter? Do we see that lower third? Hey, oh. that's my name. That's my Twitter. That's my name. Look at that right next to Oh, yeah, that's my name. <laughs> there you go. Thank that's, you. That's one to send to the, the relatives. All right, thanks. Get one more time, get up in Lowy Mengis. Yeah. All right. How's that energy feel? How you feeling? Oh, man. Good, because I, I thought it was just me. I'm very excited for our next guest, our musical guest of the evening. Are you ready to feel? Are you ready to move? Yeah. You've thought. You've processed. Now we don't. You can just. Uh. He had a new album just come out called Full Moon, available where things are available, all the online things, all the musical things, all the things in your phone right now, you can get him there now, after we get him here for us live. Are you all ready? Yeah. So excited, everybody give it up for Kid Astronauts. Check, check, check. What's up? Denver Open Media. This is awesome. This is my first time uh, performing here. And I'm excited to uh, be here. Um, let's get it started. Just to look into your eyes Your far out west impromptu And have you back before sunrise Dancing through the
darling, I can't take my hands off you While we're passing all these city limits Your lips on me while I'm staring And I'm in love with all the things you do If this time won't last forever Then I hope that you remember Dancing through the desert Girl, I never had someone love me so <laughs> All right, so um, honestly, I do want my, m my music to kind of be like uh, portals. So I just put out an album on March 31st called Full Moon. Um, and it was the culmination of like such a long process and so much like crazy life happenings. Um, so I hope you guys listen to it. And it's on Spotify and everywhere. So, vibe it. Um, but I am from Denver, Colorado. Um, I, I love this city, even though I've been here my whole life. Um, and one of my favorite places to hang out is behind the Denver Nature and Science Museum. And I wrote this song based on that view. Um, so I hope we can go there right now together. This song is called Purple in the Sky. Sun is setting, darling. It might get dark out there. You might feel cold breeze call you. In October air, I can't wait to see you underneath purple lemon sky. Waves of color paint our scene, and birds are dancing way up there. Yeah, I'd be jealous of their freedom, but I like it with you down here. Yeah. I can't wait to see you underneath. Purple lemon sky Underneath purple lemon sky Underneath purple lemon sky Underneath purple lemon sky Underneath purple lemon Do 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 do
Thank you. Um, so I started playing guitar like uh, 2015, 16, 17, 18, so three years now. Um, and I, I told myself I couldn't play guitar and I had it in my head, like I can't ever play. And then I was just like, forget that, I'm gonna start playing guitar. Um, so I, I just tell that story just because a lot of people are like, yo, I can't I have this guitar that I don't play. And it's like the most incredible instrument to me, like just as a songwriter and as a musician, I feel like it has its own secrets that you kind of have to unlock and like trust it. So if you're like trying to trust yourself or whatever, I think you should play guitar. Um, this is a cover. Could I get my guitar vocal or like my guitar sound just like a little bit lower? In the monitors. Guess it's true, I'm not good at a one night stand. But I still need love cause I'm testament. These nights never seem to go to plan I don't want you to leave where you hold my hand oh, won't you stay with me cause you're all I need and this ain't love it's clear to see Darling, won't you stay? Darling, won't you stay? Yeah. Darling, won't you stay? All right, um, I need your help on this song. Uh, maybe you've heard this, maybe you have not. But the part that you have to sing is very easy. Um, I'll teach it to you. <laughs> 
after this, please uh, please make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter and stuff. I'll be posting more shows and more music. I'm coming out with shirts soon, all types of stuff. So, This song is called Mother, and um, one of my favorite shows is Avatar, The Last Airbender. I'm mad inspired by that show. Um, I had a roommate who like would refuse to watch it because it was a cartoon, but if you watch it, you'll be like, oh my god, this is the most profound experience of my life. So anyway, this song is called Mother. Listen to the rain outside your window It is falling, it is falling Listen to the That sounded so good, I like forgot how to play guitar for a second. I was just zoning out. It was a vibe. Good job, guys. Um, I don't know how much time I have, um, but this could be my last song. Um, this is a, it's been a crazy, it's been a crazy life. Like, life has been crazy. Um, I just had two boys. 
like two actual like boys, like kids. And they're like awesome and beautiful, but it's also like crazy. Um, and I'm still making music and still like, you know, just making the most out of life. Um, you could turn the guitar up a little bit in the monitors actually. Um, but this song is called Connect. And um, I hope that you guys really do listen to the music on Spotify. Um, just because like I released an album called Moon Theory and it was one space and then Full Moon was one space. Um, and I just hope that you guys dig the music and share it. Um, but yeah, this song is called Connect and um, I guess it's about where I'm at right now. I think songs have a special way of doing that. Oh, we bored of space. Oh, we bored of time. Do we hate each other? Cause it feels that way sometimes. Thank y'all, I'm Kid Astronaut. Oh, shit. I have more time. I'm sorry I said the S word. I can't even see that. Yo, I wear glasses. What does that say? Oh, my God. All right, let's do this then. You guys hanging out. Thank you. I appreciate this. Um, this is dope. Search of a good girl, but I know what would be better if we made a movie, listen to music in my bed. Turn down the lights for you, cause when you're next to me, your love is soft and sweet, but we'll find our escape 
in space and color and we'll hide away together in these covers cause next to you I lose my time and distance and maybe I could learn you I'll pay attention Encased in you, can't tell our frames apart, ours. I'm howling like a wolf, I call your name. And wanting you run savvy through these veins. But we'll find our escape in space and color. Um, so I guess I could tell you what's next. Um, I'm working on a new album already. I know I just put one out. But uh, it's, like, fun for me to make music. And, like, I feel this, like, compelled, like, I need to, ah, <laughs> you know? Um, so I want to, like, really dive into new sounds and creating new things that um, just inspire me and listening to a lot more, like, a wide array of music. So if you guys are music listeners, um, there's an artist that I'm really inspired by. His name is Strome. He has nothing to do with my next album. But um, I think you guys should listen to him just because I think it's important to talk about music that you enjoy. And it's important to talk about stuff that you enjoy. You could talk about shit that's whack. Um, I'm sorry. Um... <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> um anyway um i've been thinking a lot about uh just time and how crazy it is um but my grandma she she passed in 2015 and she was an awesome lady and like a lot of the stuff that i'm able to do now is because of her and her work while she was alive, which is weird. Um, but I wrote this song because I was on the road with my band. I was a part of Air Dubai, and we were on Warp Tour, and um, I wasn't able to be at her funeral, which I hate funerals. I wasn't really tripping. Um, but I still wanted to kind of give her something. And um, this song is called Before It Runs Down. And uh, it's about just living your best life. Um, I don't know. That's all I can say about it. All right. Guess I never understood love. I was taking it for 
Lord granted. Time shows the best of us, but I learned it also takes the best away. I miss my best friend. Could have sworn that we were brothers. Nowadays, when I see you out, we act like we don't even know each other. But that's how this goes. Sometimes life won't be easy. But I still have hope that we'll figure this out. And I'll make the most of the time that I'm given before it runs down. Oh, oh. I miss my grandmother. Wasn't that a sequel? But I hope that you're smiling as I play my songs out on the road. And I don't have the answers to why this life must end. But I know it's not what you get out. Said it's all about what you put in. And that's how this goes. Sometimes life won't be easy. But I still have hope that we'll figure this thing out. And I'll make the most of the time that I'm given. Before it runs down, yeah, yeah. And that's how this goes. Sometimes life won't be easy. But I still have hope that we'll figure this thing out. And I'll make the most of the time that I'm given before it runs. Thank you. Thank you all so much for spending your um, first Friday with me. This is awesome. This is uh, a great first Friday for me personally. Um, happy June, you know what I'm saying? June 1st. Um, let me see. I know, I know that there's something I have not played, and I'm trying to pull it from the darkest points of my brain. <laughs> Let me play another cover. <laughs> um, I was going through it like a very, sometimes I like hate music and I'm just like, ah, ah. <laughs> get really grumpy about it. Um, and then there are certain artists that come along that are like really re-inspire me. Um, one of those artists being James Fauntleroy. Uh, if you have not heard of him, he's probably written your favorite song, honestly. Um, and the other artist was Frank Ocean. And um, I heard about him like through Nostalgia Ultra, and I was like, man, I didn't know you could like make music and write words and like create visuals like this. It was crazy um, and mind expanding. Um, so I'm, I'm playing a show with. Uh, some dancers coming up called Murmuration on June 9th. And um, it will be a really special event. Um, so I'm covering this Frank Ocean song. And I'm going to um, play it right now. What do you think my brain is 
was made for Is it just a container for the mind That gray, gray matter Since they replied What is your woman? Is she just a container for the child That soft pink matter Cotton candy Margin boo Turn the lights and fall to you My God, she's giving me pleasure Pleasure Since they went quiet and then violent And we sparred until we both grew tired And nothing mattered Cotton candy, Mars and Boo Turn the lights and fall into She's giving me You were such a habit to call. Ain't myself at all. I had to tell myself, nah. She better with a fella with a regular job. I didn't want to get it involved. I didn't miss the action. I was sitting in awe. Hopped into my car, drove far. Far too close. And I remember my memory's no sharp. But a night, what a life anyway. I'm building y'all a clock. Stop. What am I anyway? Got the kind of body that'll probably intimidate. Any of them that will unsouthern. But not me, cousin. If models are made for modeling, thick girls are made for cuddling. Switch worlds and we can huddle in. You need no other friend. I need to hold your hand. You need no other man. We'll flee the other land. Say you good at being bad. You're bad at being good. For heaven's sake, go to hell. Knock, knock on wood. Yeah, you're good at being bad. Said you're bad at being good. For heaven's sake, go to hell. That's pink matter. All right. Um, let's see. OK. I think this is going to be my last one. Is that cool? I still got 15. I usually play like a keyboard, and um, I have like, you know, a lot more equipment. So just come see me next time. That's what that will be. This song is, um, I'm still like trying to figure out where this song came from in my brain and like, I saw this movie called Parisia Tim and it like just stuck with me. Like, I don't know if you guys have ever heard of it or seen it. There was also a New York version, not as good. Um, but it's like these six or so short films all in one film and they like all interact through the city of Paris and like it's so beautiful and just like 
It's such a magical film. I, I need you guys to go see it. Or just like look it up online. You'll love it. Report back. We could talk about it. All right. Um, but this song kind of reminds me of that vibe. And um, I'll leave you with this. I'm Kid Astronaut. upon my skin it's okay to sit in silence with you help to ease my troubled mind I don't mind wasting time yeah. and I love the taste of so much. I'm Kid Astronaut. Please follow me online.
behind the music. Only as long as you want, you know, some artists are Yeah, sure, like, let's, let's I'm do out, it. smoke bomb, but you know, whatever. You, you already gave him a piece of your soul, you talked to him, you gave him homework, yeah. homework assignments, some, some music to listen Movies, to. Movies, music, yo, you know? Let's get it. It's <laughs> the whole experience. So yeah, was, was this mostly stuff from the new album, or was this a mix? Um, because I had more time than I thought, uh, I threw some unreleased stuff in there, actually. Um, yeah, I don't know. I was just kind of having fun. This was a very cool vibe. Like, when I walked in, I was like, this is going to be a fun night. So yeah. tried to just bring that energy, you know, and um, keep that, that, that up, you know? Yeah. Definitely. But please listen to Full Moon. There's stuff that I didn't play tonight on there. Um, it sounds completely different than just me and a guitar. But even with my guitar, I try and create, like, a whole element, and I hope that, like, was reached. Like, yeah. it's oh. bigger than just the music, so or the guitar, I guess. Definitely. So this was kind of like a plugged, unplugged version. You usually have more. Yeah, have like more I played with a band. I played, played with. Yeah. Uh, it shows up a lot of different ways, and it kind of depends on what the show is and like where I'm at in my life. Um, but either way, I wanted it to still be a really dope experience. So I hope that. that yeah, that made this so much cooler yeah. to know this like one side of you. Cool. It's a whole awesome. prism. There's a whole awesome. Whole, That's cool. There's a whole crystal to look at yeah, from different yeah. angles. Yeah. Anytime you'll see me, it will be different. <laughs> I'm a Gemini, you know. Gotta keep it. Oh, ditto. Nice. Nice. <laughs> really? That's dude. what's up. There's four <laughs> of us right here. Yeah, I right know. Yeah. We're on four on stage. On stage right now. <laughs> well, cool. Um, well, yeah, man. Um, future stuff. What's going on? What What do you? I mean, I know the the album is right now. Yep. But plans? Any? Yeah. So you're I'm, Denver I'm man. hoping to uh, take this. I'm from Denver, and like I love this city, and I wanna um, take just like the Denver like message, I guess. Like I love Denver and it's awesome. I wanna take that around the world and, and be known as a Denver artist for sure. So traveling, touring, um, working on like content. I'm really into like technology and I think Kid Astronaut is like very futuristic, so you'll see some of that. Um, but also being a father, man, like it's what it's yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so so my you, next, you're not the kid. Is your kid the kid? Yeah, I'm like dad astronaut now. All of a sudden, <laughs> 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 uh, still kid uh, astronaut though. Still like to have fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, so my next album, um, it will still stay with the uh, celestial themes. Um, it will be called Sun, but S O N. And I'm still like gaining the inspiration from being like in this new phase of my life. So I hope that all of that will kind of come out through the album. I haven't even started it yet, honestly. Well, it but sounds like you have in a way. In a way, yeah. It's like the, the yeah. second I released Full Moon, I was like, cool, now I know, you know. Right. Yeah. That's incredible. That's awesome. Well, thanks so much. Well, where can we follow you one more time? Yeah, please. At Kid Astronaut. It's not spelled incorrectly. Obviously, Kid Astronaut is spelled that way. But um, right the dude with Kid Astronaut on Instagram and just be like, give up your name. <laughs> We're gonna start a campaign. I know. Hashtag. But give, honestly, give I like I like it with the V though. Um, so look look it's up like Instagram, Cyrillic, Twitter. Kinda yeah, Russian feel. Uh, sure. Know, <laughs> what, kinda, yeah, yeah, whatever you want it to be. Um, <laughs> as long as you're finding me on there, um, yes, not yeah, the other guy who doesn't use his Instagram. Oh, like, and he doesn't come even on. use he it. He doesn't even use that's it. That's the worst. So uh, yeah, please just follow me and um, you know, stay up to date. Fantastic. Thanks so much. One more yeah. time for Kid Astronaut, everybody. Thank you. Amazing. All right. And now it is time, not over yet, the prize portion of tonight. We have three prizes to give. Let me join Leslie, one of our amazing helpers here. Leslie, how you doing? Doing great. How about you? Fantastic. Ready to give away some great prizes tonight. Uh, so let you know, we got three prizes. One of them is passes to the Intendance Film Festival for you and a buddy. One is passes to Comedy Works for you and a buddy. And the other is membership. To this, to beautiful Denver Open Media, you can jump behind these cameras and click and point and mess everything up. It's fantastic, it's really fun. You gotta mess it up before you do it right. So, uh, are you ready? Um, which one do you wanna do first? Basic membership and free class. So a basic membership here gets you access to our editing suites along with discounts on classes and the ability to submit content. And then as part of the education department, I have to rep our classes. Our classes are fantastic. They're mostly taught by John Aiden. And we offer a variety of different classes and everything from Photoshop to GarageBand to um, Google AdWords and everything in between. So whatever you want to learn digitally, you can learn here. So, yeah. Amazing. All right. Get ready? No, let's put that one back in. You get a fair chance. You get a fair chance. All right. The winner of our free basic membership and class is Cheyenne Scott. 
Cheyenne, where are you at? You gotta be here to win. No go home, no early go homers, get it. Cheyenne, going once, two, three times. See you, Cheyenne. Our potential next winner is Abe, abraham.att at, you know. Abe, just Abe. Solo career musician, like Madonna, no? Out of here, Abe. Pick a good one this time. Pick someone here. Um, so we have Will YTS Sobel. Sorry, I'm so sorry. Yeah, Willie! <laughs> yeah! Our own Westward representative. Now you can come here and make Westwardy things. You don't have an acceptance speech, but happy to come up here and join the party, you know? You know what, you gotta revel in this moment. You know, stay up here with us, help us pick another one. Um, which, which prize should we do next, Leslie? Um, let's do the passes to Comedy Works next. Okay, no wait, let me, I just wanna pick this first one because this person right here always wins stuff and it's not your turn tonight, okay? This person always doesn't win. I'm not even gonna say lose, they're just, it's, everyone wins this stuff. Um, I can't. Gage, Gage, Conrad, Gabe, Gay, Gay. Is roommate acceptable? Yeah. Let's give it to him. He better bring you along to the comedy works because you're the buddy for this, obviously. Shout out to Gabe. He did it. And then our final. Yeah, so these will be two passes to the Intendance Film Festival, which will be held next week, June 8th to 9th. Um, and we would love to see you here back at Denver Open Media. So with no further ado, uh, Journey Edwards. Hey. Journey! Yes, going on a journey to Intendance to watch some beautiful film action. Well, we did it. Give it up for our winners tonight. Our amazing, not always on stage, but tonight it felt right. Everybody, thank you so much. You are the winners and feel free to do whatever, because I gotta thank our sponsors. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you, everybody. Just gotta thank our sponsors. Do a little sweeping up before we go. Thanks always, we do this first Friday. Thanks again to Westward. Happy to have them here. Sexy Pizza, Sex Pot Comedy, Crazy Mountain Brewery Company. Uh, I had a lot of their beer already. Intrepid Sojourner Beer Project. Comedy Works, of course. KGNU 88.5 FM. Bop, bop, bop. Denver Open Media. All our guests tonight. The cast and crew. Give it up for all the volunteers that made this show happen. The camera people, audio, director, producer, all of them. The artists tonight. Nalawi Mengis, Aaron Maslow. Keep it going for the comedians. And, of course, Kid Astronaut taking us intergalactic, and then back on Earth again. This feels nice to have some gravity. Thanks again, let's do this again, first Friday. I'm Daniel Reskin, check out Democracy though, third Wednesday of the month. Thanks again, good night. <laughs>